Very good evening, and thanks for clicking on to Vogan's European Outlook for Wednesday, the 5th of October. Before we get into the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Share the love of Mar Vogan Weller on um, your social media and uh, you know spread the word that winter is coming. And marvoganweller.com is right up there looking at the finer details. We did a video yesterday with regards to the contradiction, somewhat of a contradiction between the longer term models indicating some very strong blocking versus some of the climate drivers that will look at the El Nino and the other aspects, global sea surface temperatures, polar vortex, you know, quasi biennial oscillation, Indian Ocean Dipole. Indian Ocean Dipole and the El Nino not looking overly favorable. At this moment in time, things could change, and uh, there has been a bit of a flip around in the long range model in the last 24 hours or so with regards to high latitude blocking uh, being lost um, in the model for the upcoming winter season. But we've had a very negative NAO summer, so um, you know, uh, there's a lot of things to look at. Be sure to check out yesterday's video and also in the upcoming week. So, next week, we're going to have. The winter 2023-24 thoughts update number two that is going to include arctic sea ice uh, that has not been looked at as such yet we're also going to look at prospects of a sudden stratospheric warming but we're looking at of course the the key factors here that go into looking at the long range uh, current global state both the land and the ocean temperature normally of course the o oceans are without a doubt in uncharted in chartered territory in terms of living memory uh, i use that loosely because of course we know that beyond a couple of hundred years we don't truly really know where we've been at but of course and you know my thoughts with regards to that as well but certainly with regards to the atlantic um it is record breaking warm and that is going to of course have to be taken into the played into the equation Current overall global sea surface temperature anomaly, the past summer upper air patterns, we've had lots of blocking. What does that necessarily mean? Enzo, so this is Southern Oscillation Index. So of course, we've got the El Nino at the moment here. At the moment, the core of warmest waters in the Eastern portion of the Pacific. What type of El Nino may we get as we move towards the heart of winter season? That is gonna be critical, I think, also, the Madden Julian Oscillation, which isn't mentioned in this, and there can be quite a good relationship between the, the various phases of the Madden Julian Oscillation and the type of El Nino that we have. Also, the Indian Ocean Dipole is very, very strong at the moment. It continues to strengthen, it looks as if it's strengthening to levels of 2019. And what influence may that have on such things as the strength of the polar vortex, high latitude blocking? Uh, and type of winter also atlantic hurricane activity is another thing that will get taken into consideration but there's also eurasian snow cover which is slowly starting to build now and also um there is the as escaped my mind eurasian snow cover uh prospects of a sudden stratospheric warming and there was one other thing that I, it's now escaped my mind and it's going to annoy me now that we're going to arctic sea ice Arctic sea ice is another thing we're going to look at. Where are we with regards to the solar situation as well? So lots of things to look at. Stay tuned here on marfoonweather.com. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free and there is a lot of work getting put in now to this upcoming winter forecast that will eventually be released sometime towards the end of November. And I'm looking forward to presenting that with you here. So some point next week, we will have update number two with regards to the winter. So stay tuned for that. So anyway, let's have a look at what's going on with our weather at the moment and what we're going to expect over the next several days. We've got not one, not two, but possibly three areas of low pressure to contend with. Strong area of high pressure encompassing the southern half of Europe at the moment, keeping things unseasonably warm here. The problem that we have is we've got a very deep trough over the North Atlantic. Lots of disturbed weather in between that. So these areas of low pressure over uh, and to the northwest of the UK extending all the way into the subtropical Atlantic means that we've got this pipeline of moisture running around the top of this area of high pressure. 
So we've had the rain over the course of yesterday through the central belt of Scotland, western portions of the, the remainder of the UK, Ireland as well. We've got another system that moved through over the course of today. We've got another feature that is going to make inroads. Now, we, we have got, of course, at the moment, so this is looking at the 12 UTC today, area of low pressure to the west of the UK. Notice here that we've got this uh, little piece of energy here between the two areas of low pressure. This feature here that is now bringing the heavy rain across the UK will move out of the way. And it's this little feature between two areas of low pressure that is going to bring some very heavy persistent rain through the overnight period tonight here. So you notice that as we move into tomorrow afternoon, uh, you notice here that we've got uh, plenty of rain, uh, but we've also got this little bit of a pipeline connection here between the tropics, subtropics, and the northwest UK here. Of course, when you've got this situation um, where you've got the deep trough over the North Atlantic, you've got a strong ridge of high pressure over the UK or over Europe, in fact. What you have is quite a slow moving boundary, and that moisture getting drawn out of the subtropics runs the boundary and then sets up shop over the northwest of the UK. Now, we've seen that with the November 2009 outbreak, heaviest rainfall on record for, the, for that time. Then we had December 2015, Storm Desmond, same situation took place, very strong area of high pressure over mainland Europe, deep trough over the North Atlantic. And in between that, we had that pipeline of moisture. And with the, the two systems, the high over Europe, the low over the over the open Atlantic, that of course means it traps that boundary in between and you have that persistent heavy rainfall. What adds to that enhances the rainfall. So you've got that steady persistent rain for you know 12 upwards of 24 hours at times. What the problem is is you've got orographic lift. So as that moisture bumps in to the lee of these mountains, so the, the windward side of the hills, whether it be North Wales, Cumbria, the Northwest Highlands, wherever that boundary sets up and you've got that steady heavy rainfall for that prolonged period of time, you add in orographic lift and you in increase the chance of, you know, 150, 200, 250 millimetres of rain within a 24 to 48 hour period. That is the concern that we have because we've already seen a significant amount of moisture into the West Highlands of Scotland. But you notice here that during early Saturday morning, you've got this boundary here separating very warmer here, cooler air with the open Atlantic. You've got that hose pipe of moisture then getting uh, drafted in, bumping into the, the hills of the western side of Scotland, and you've got heavy, persistent rain for a prolonged period of time. Now, the problem that we also have, notice the amount of uh, these kind of orangey colours representing very heavy precipitation. The problem that we have is if we look at the 850 temperature profile, you've got a very significant contrast between cold to the north and unusually warmer to the south. That then enhances the, uh, the frontal system itself and increases the rainfall amount. So this could be a very significant amount of rain that falls later Friday and through much of Saturday. It's not going to go anywhere. It's kind of stuck in place. But it's all driven, if you notice here, by this area of low pressure over the North Atlantic. And two days ago, I made mention that the models were very different between the GFS and the ECMWF. Now, the GFS had that area of low pressure, similar position to where the ECMWF has it now. So to the west, well out over the Atlantic, warmer getting drafted um, to the east of that, northwards. But there we have this deep area of low pressure over southern uh, Finland, the Baltic states here, what that's doing is that system is then drawn Arctic air southwards towards the UK at the same time this area of low pressure over the Atlantic is trying to draw warm, very warm air northwards and it's right in between that boundary there separating two systems that is going to then uh, produce heavy persistent rain. We could have a flash flood situation developing here with this uh, overall um, outcome here. So back to the overview chart, you can see the very heavy persistent rain separating the two 
very extreme air masses here. So quite an interesting situation developed. Notice actually it shows the development of an area of low pressure here. But notice as we play through the loop, it goes nowhere. That moisture stays in place right the way through to the end of Saturday. It eventually starts to weaken, if you notice here. But that is going to uh, produce a lot of rain over a fairly prolonged period of time. Now, if we have a look at Scotland in particular, we'll look at the heat in just a second because we could see 26, possibly 27 Celsius at the same time down in the southeast corner of the British Isles here. So we're going to see a big difference in temperature as well. But let's have a look and see what, the, what is shown here for Scotland in particular. We'll play through the overview chart here. And I'm honing in on Scotland primarily because it's focused over Scotland. So we'll play through the loop. This is midnight, Saturday morning. Notice here the bright colours. And notice how it doesn't go anywhere. It stays stuck in place right the way through to Sunday morning here. So how much rain is expected to fall with this situation here? Well, let's have a look at the accumulated precipitation totals. And by 3 o'clock Sunday morning... It's got a total of 153 millimetres of rain between now. That's actually from now right the way through to uh, Sunday morning here. Let's have a look at the, ECM, uh, the GFS sorry, and have a look and see what that's showing with regards to totals. Because I think this could be a lot more than even what that's suggesting. Now, notice something quite different here. Let's have a look. Let's go back. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping back and forth. I do apologise about that. Let's have a look at the overview of the, the GFS because it's showing the heaviest rainfall further south here. Now, remember the GFS indicated that that cold air would come down over the north of Scotland here, that warm air coming up to the south. Then we've got that, you know, plus 15 versus minus 5 uh, isotherm between the north of Scotland and the south coast of England. Now, the ECMWF did always have that warm air getting further north. It didn't have that low quite as prominent over southern Finland, over the Baltic Sea, to transport that cold air south. But look at the differences here. So we've got that heavy rainfall moving through, and then there is the development of the low pressure system here. But the GFS, interestingly enough, is showing that boundary a little bit further south. What's critical about that is the fact that it's allowing colder air to come into the north of Scotland. In other words, it's indicating snowfall over the mountains as opposed to just heavy precipitation. So it's all about the crux of this is between the difference between the GFS and the ECMWF is the GFS is further south with the boundary separating the two air masses. The ECMWF further north here. So we're, we've got warmer air, we've got heavy, hev, potentially heavier precipitation as well. But it's going to be all about the positioning of that separation, that demarcation zone between the, the, the warmer and the colder. And have a look at the, sn the snowfall prospect. And you can see here that it is sniffing out snowfall here by the time we reach. Uh, so let's have a look. So you can see it's showing snow. Nothing dramatic, nothing exceptional, especially for the time of year. But it's interesting, nonetheless, to be showing that if we look at the ECMWF, the chances are it's showing nothing with regards to snow cover uh, seen by the model. Have a quick play through the loop and see what it's showing here. It's not really picking up on anything in particular here, whereas the GFS indicates that front being a little bit further south. Interesting stuff, that's for sure. We'll keep an eye on that as we go forward here. Okay, so real quick, let's have a look at the CFS V2. This is a slightly outdated version. The simple fact is that it's updating at the moment here. We will look at the Manjilin oscillation in the second half of October into the early portion of November. Could be some interesting developments with regards to a reinforced negative NAO pattern. We'll look at that in a bit more detail, possibly tomorrow, if not in the early next week. So stay tuned for that. Upcoming seven days, looks like this of the CFS V2. Quite a strong block. For the next seven days here looking at week two notice here the negative to the north uh, higher pressure to the south here generally speaking it's milder and potentially uh, we'll have a look and see the precipitation yeah so wetter north drier south in the week two you can see here that it's slightly wetter across england and wales 
versus further north here. Run out of time as usual. Stay tuned, like, share, and subscribe. See you again with Plenty tomorrow. Bye for now.